Okay, so today's Wednesday, which means tomorrow is Thursday, which means tomorrow is the start of NFL Week 8. And there's a part of me that's like, all right, there's nowhere to go but up. I can't do worse than last week. I got four games right last week. I was dog shit at my picks. The other part of me goes, you got four right. You can do worse. <laughs> you could get three right. You could get two right. You could get one right. You could get nothing right. You could have an imperfect week, which is almost kind of exciting. Like, do I want that? No. I would like to be correct, but it's also like so hilariously inept that it's kind of special. So... I weirdly wouldn't complain for being total dog shit, but let's get into the actual pick, starting with tomorrow's game, Tampa Bay at Buffalo. And I look at this and go, okay, Tampa has, which I keep saying every week, a good defense, a very opportunistic defense, and they're playing Buffalo, who likes to turn the ball over. They're playing a Buffalo team that doesn't seem, at least the last few weeks, doesn't really get going until the fourth quarter. So if they're shooting themselves in the foot with interceptions and like probably some fumbles to missed field goals because that's the Tyler Bass special the past few weeks. I really, really would not be surprised to see Tampa win. I'm kind of starting to talk myself into picking them, but really what it comes down to is I can't quit Buffalo. I still like this Bills team. I still really like the... It, I still have a lot of faith in Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs and that connection. I'm hoping we get to really see Von Miller come alive because I love Von Miller. It's like Tampa probably does win i think they are the better team right now they're at least the healthier team you gotta give them that but i still want to pick buffalo to win so i will so i've got the bills at home the next game is the jets and the giants i do think that these past couple weeks the giants have looked better under tyrod taylor like, it seems like he doesn't get sacked nearly as much as Danny Dimes. They can actually move the ball. Last week, they scored on offense. They scored two offensive touchdowns. I didn't even know they could do that. But now with Tyrod, they can. And I'm assuming Jones is still injured. It's not changing my pick, because either way, I'm picking the Jets. Because to me, it's like, yeah, the Giants are looking better. But even with Aaron Rodgers gone, like, the Jets have been looking better for the past few weeks, at least on offense. The defense is very good. And I know they were injured last week, or excuse me, not last week, the week before against Philly. But A, they were on a bye. So that gives me more faith that the defense can get healthier. And two, even with an injured defense, they still beat Philly. They still force three turnovers. And again, and one of them wasn't really on Jalen Hurts. It was like it bounced, it looked like it bounced off his receiver. It's like, eh. But one of them he was hit as he threw. So that was caused by the defense and the pass rush. The other was a terrible throw by Hurts. So like that's like good job on the defense setting that shit up. So going against the Giants, that Jets defense is going to feast. And yeah, the Jets' offense has its problems. Hey, for sure, have their fucking problems. And I do think the Giants' defense is underrated. But I think the Jets' defense is going to play so well. And the offense is going to do enough. I think the Jets win. I think the Jets get above 500 for the second time this season. Because, you know, beating Buffalo got them there the first time. So I, I've got... It's weird to say I've got the Jets on the road because it's still their home stadium, but it's technically a Giants home game, so I guess I've got the road team in this one. After that, it's the Jags and the Steelers. Like, I'm going to be playing the Pittsburgh defense in fantasy. I know how this goes. <laughs> they get multiple fumble returns. They get an interception. One to two touchdowns. <laughs> Steelers are winning. It's going to be it's going to be classic Steeler football. Okay, not classic classic, but 
modern it's gonna be a modern Steelers like this is what this is who they are weird game weird grungy low scoring game less be partly because of good defense and also because just weird shit is happening the Steelers hang around just enough then the high-end talent comes in in the fourth quarter on offense and defense and Steelers win the Jaguars I still think are a good team even if they lose this one they're just gonna fall victim to weird Steelers bullshit and Pittsburgh's gonna go to five and two which I was really not expecting from the Steelers but hey I mean good for them man after that, that's uh, the Eagles against the Commies. So the last game in Philadelphia, the Commies almost won. It was like they had a big lead, lost the lead, came back to tie the game, like literally last play of the game, had the ball first in overtime, but couldn't get it done. The Eagles, they're not perfect. I mean, obviously, like, they lost to the Jets, but I still think they are a better team and even then, that game in Philly, the Eagles had a perfect record. So Washington bullshit curse magic was in effect. They couldn't quite pull it off, but it was in effect. That's not in effect this week. The commies have no powers. Um, I guess the only thing they have is it's in the gulag. It is in DC. <laughs> That's something because FedEx Field is... Dude, FedEx Field is, like, disgusting. Like, I've never been there, but, like, I've seen some of the shit. Like, you remember, I think it was last year or the year before, where there was, like, sewage actively leaking into the stands. Like, it's, it's a shit, it's a fucking shit, old man. There's a reason I call it the Gulag. But I feel like this Eagles team is too good to lose to Washington with how inconsistent Washington is. Which, of course, means that if I genuinely look at this and go, Washington is going to lose, it means they're going to fucking win because I don't know what the commies. They're just... I'm still going to pick the Eagles, but, like, I don't, I don't fucking know what to believe with them. Uh, the Rams and the Cowboys. So I've been very critical of Dallas all year. I'll fucking wear that on my sleeve, man. I... I think they're a good team. I don't think they're... I, I think they're a five, maybe, depending on other teams' records, maybe a six seed. They'll probably win a wild card game. Probably lose in the divisional round against a much better opponent like the Niners or the Eagles. And there will be some weird, goofy shit that happens at the end of the game. Because literally the last two years... You had the Dak run, which, what, why was there, like, a quarterback draw when you have no timeouts? And Zeke at center. <laughs> Zeke at center is, like, one of my favorite football plays of all time. <laughs> because I don't know what they were trying to do. All I know is it failed before it started. It's not my favorite play of all time. That's probably the Griff Whalen Colts weird fake punt. <laughs> I saw that live. Like, I wasn't in Indianapolis, but, like, I remember watching it live going, what? It's like, okay, like, they're trying to get him off sides, like, doing some weird substitution shit. Why did they snap the ball? <laughs> My point is, as goofy as Dallas can be, as much as I say, it's like, do I think they're really going to do anything this year? No. I still trust the Cowboys more than the Rams. Because the Rams are also very inconsistent. The Rams, they seem to actually have a lot of trouble scoring in the second half. Like, I've noticed, like, they didn't do shit against Pittsburgh. They didn't do shit in the second half against the Eagles. That's not a good look. And it's, it's not like they're the Falcons. There was like a good few years in the Matt Ryan era. It's like, that's what the Falcons are. I remember describing them as a Dragon Ball Z character doing that volley of blasts. And, like, and then they like blast a bunch of shit. And, then, 
<laughs> and then they like see the character still standing there who you know they could sense anyways but for some reason they're not like oh my god i can sense them they have to wait until the smoke clears to see them I'm like oh, oh no all my shit didn't work and now i'm really tired i mean that's what the falcons were all their scoring in the second half and then when the after the volley if the team can withstand it the falcons were kind of fucked and then you know that culminated in 28 to 3 that's kind of how the rams feel this year where they can do shit in the first half, but not really in the second half, but not as, like, the fireworks aren't as strong as, like, those Falcons teams. Like, they're competent, and then they just kind of stop. I don't really trust that. There's also, oh, the off-the-field thing, when I believe this is when, like, Sean McVay's kid is coming, which he said, like, I'm I'm going to be at the game. I'm going to be coaching. I'm not going to leave for the birth of my son. Which, hey, I mean, that's his decision. If his wife is cool with that, I've got no beef with that. But there is kind of part of me that does wonder. It's like, yes, I imagine he is still taking this game very seriously. There's still his preparation. But with that off the field, I don't even want to say an off the field issue. Because, no, like having his fucking kid born is not an issue. But it is an off the field distraction, and I don't know if that is something that's affected the preparation at all. So I feel like, and I think Dallas was also off last week, so the, you know, the bye, there's time to rest, but there's extra time to prepare. I'm gonna give the edge to the Cowboys in this game. After that, we have Minnesota and Green Bay. The Packers lost to the Broncos. All right, so let me put it like this. Let me give you my arguments as to why the Packers are going to lose. Number one, you lost to Denver. Number two, you lost to Denver, comma, or I guess maybe dash, after a bye, where like I just said, it's like, you know, Dallas, you had like an extra week to prepare. I'm going to assume, I'm going to give you a little bit of an edge. The Packers had an extra week to prepare for the fucking Broncos and lost. That is inexcusable with like multiple explanation po exclamation points. Reason number three, the Packers don't do shit in the first half of football games. I was just talking about the Rams, how the Rams seem to not, like they forget how to play offense in the second half. The Packers don't know how to play offense in the first half, which worked against the Saints. I don't even know who that was to. I don't know if that was me hating the Packers, if that was me hating my Saints. I think it was just frustration. <laughs> but anyways, it's like they can't play football in the first half or they can't play offense in the first half. That's just, that's not good. Like I'm, I don't want to trust a team that only plays one half of football. And num reason number four, Vikings beat the 49ers. <laughs> oh yes, maybe are invincible. They've dropped two straight. But the Vikings, without their best offensive player... I mean, you can maybe make an argument that Kirk Cousins is a better offensive player than Justin Jefferson, but I feel like I would say Justin Jefferson is their best offensive player. They beat the 49ers. They're not scared of the Packers, especially without Aaron Rodgers. Like, Jordan Love is no Aaron Rodgers. Like, I'm not going to make that like a another argument on my imaginary chalkboard that's just a fact but they're not as scary anymore and i feel like that lack especially like when you just beat the 49ers and now you're going against a division rival and the boogeyman is gone the vikings are more kind of licking their chops for this game now maybe the packers do pull off a win it's like again it's any given sunday when I said, man, like, I think the Browns' defense will keep it close, but they're not beating San Francisco. No way. Oh. Well, I mean, there's no way the Vikings are going to lose, or the Vikings are going to beat San Francisco. Oh. I can't say there's no way Minnesota's going to lose, but if I was in, like, a survivor pool, I'd probably pick them. But I also would have done that last week for San Francisco, so... Say what you fucking will about that, but I've got Minnesota. Atlanta and Tennessee. 
This is definitely going to be like a low-scoring defensive battle. Desmond Ritter is probably going to turn the ball over a few times. Two weeks ago, it was picks. Last week's, it was fumbles. Maybe it'll be a little bit of both. It'll kind of keep the Titans on the edge. But Tannehill is not playing. And on the one hand, there's the part of me that goes, like, and again, like, I'm not wishing injury on anybody or happy for an injury. Like, I sincerely hope he can get well soon. But there's that part of me that goes, maybe having one of the young kids, either Willis or Levis, coming in in relief of Tannehill can give the offense that spark it needs and they can really, like, go on a run. The other part of me goes, Tannehill was playing terribly. And he was above both of the kids in the depth chart. Again, you can make the argument, it's like, well, I mean, Tyrod was starting over Justin Herbert. Look how that turned out. Alex Smith was starting over Patrick Mahomes, which granted, that was also very much like, he'll give the rookie a year to sit and learn, and then let him work his magic, and oh, what do you know, he threw 50 fucking touchdowns his first season. Like, holy shit. Like, yes, like, there's a reason... You want the rookie to sit and learn. I mean, Willis isn't a rookie. He's in his second year. Like, they're both raw. Make them learn under a veteran. And we'll kind of see what happens. But you're like, man, if neither of them were starting, that's maybe not good. And the little bit we saw of Malik Willis last year didn't look very good. A little bit we saw of him last year. No, it wasn't last week's their offense. Like, also doesn't look very good. It's like, yes, Tennessee is coming off a bye so there's theoretically an advantage there. But I'm like, I I think Derrick Henry has a pretty solid game because regardless of which QB they're going to use, I think we're going to see a lot of Derrick Henry. But I feel like Atlanta maybe doesn't quite cruise to a win, but I do think the Falcons win, and I don't think it's particular it'll be close like 17 to 13 kind of shit so like it's close but you never really feel like tennessee is gonna win the game so uh so i think is there uh who's next new england and miami so but like i was saying in my earlier video that i did today Weird shit happens when the Patriots play in Miami, and it's pretty much always in the Dolphins' favor. Yes, the Dolphins are not, like, as good as they are. They are not an invincible team. Yes, the week one game... Week one. The week two game between them was very close. The Patriots can win. But weird shit happens when the Patriots go to Miami. And this is still a good Dolphins team. I'm not as confident in the Patriots. Yes, they won last week. Yes, it's something I look at and go, that makes a lot of sense given the Bills' vulnerabilities. I I feel like I trust the Dolphins right now more than the Bills. As much as I'm like, I still want to stick with Buffalo. I believe in Buffalo. I feel like I like there's... There's kind of a question mark when I say that, though. When I say that, like, yeah, I think the Dolphins are going to be fine. I don't question that. They're not going to have a perfect season. I don't think they're going to have the one seed in the AFC. Maybe not even the two seed. But I feel like, no, Miami's going to be fine. Probably winning the division at this rate. And I think having a season sweep over the Patriots will help in the overall standings. It's, hey, I mean... That's already one better division game the Buffalo's got. So yeah, I've got Miami. <sighs> Next is New Orleans and Indy. The Saints are going to take on the Colts. And... So I'm just I'm looking at my notes. Ugh. I just have no faith in the Saints right now. The defense does not seem to play 60 minutes. Against the Packers, phenomenal three quarters, and then the fourth quarter, forgot how to play defense. The Packers, excuse me, the Texans and the Jaguars, terrible first halves, phenomenal second halves, and then you know that outlier of a Patriots game. The offense 
does not it's like with the defense like they can't play complete but they can usually get a half right the fucking offense can't even do that they the last couple games have come alive in the fourth quarter they've been able to move the ball they've been able to get a lot of yards but they can't finish drives they can't score touchdowns they can't score in the red zone with an unreliable kicker and an unreliable punter none of that is a recipe for winning football and i look on the other side and go this colts team is not elite we can beat them we should beat them and then I look at what the Colts did last week, what Gardner Minshew did last week with them just running to the end zone and fucking shimmying and shit. And I'm like, dude, he was, he played well. He still had fuck ups. It was like I said, it's a weird, like it was 39 to 38. There's no defense. And then you actually watch the game. You're like, no, there was plenty of defense. What the fuck happened? And I'm like, can we, like, we should be able to stop Gardner Minshew can we we should be able to score on this colts defense will we saints are my team i don't feel confident picking them so i'm not going to i'm gonna pick the colts because here's the thing either my team loses and i'm right or my team wins and i'm happy that they won Picking the Saints is almost like a lose-lose situation because they're probably going to lose. So I'll at least do this t t to give myself an out, I guess. Okay, so the next one is Houston and Carolina, and I'm so mad that this is a regular-ass game. I wanted this to be primetime. Like, make this a Monday night game. Make this a Thursday night game. Like, I get it. And you want to do Carolina and uh, the Bears because, oh, this is the team that traded up for the number one pick, and this is the team that gave it to him. Like, let's see Justin Fields against Bryce Young. Like, I get it. But I want to see that Bryce Young-CJ Stroud matchup. Like, why was this not week one? Because I remember, like, several years ago, Jameis Winston, number one overall pick. Marcus Mariota, number one overall pick. And the schedule makers went, hmm. You know, Tampa does play Tennessee. Let's make this week one. And this is how they start. And of course, Jameis Winston's first fucking pass was a pick six. Because of course it was. His There was a perfect bookend. His first pass for the Bucks and his last pass for the Bucks, pick sixes. It's fucking art. It's like, I wanted to see this game in prime time. Young versus Stroud. And so far, Stroud has looked way better. Young has maybe looked okay-ish in some of the later games. It hasn't looked that great. CJ Stroud throws a lot of yards. He throws touchdowns. He doesn't throw interceptions. Dude is poised. He looks good but I'm going to pick Carolina in this game. And here's why. They've got to win at some point. <laughs> and that's not to say I'm going to pick them every single week until they win. But it's like, 0-16 was rare for a reason. 0-17 will be even harder. And as much as I want to see it happen, especially to a division rival, I don't think it will. Hell, the team they'll probably end up beating will be the Saints. But I'm like, ah, this is a game against a rookie quarterback who looks very good, but against a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach, and it's at home, and you're coming off a bye, and... You know, your rookie quarterback was the guy taking number one. And, you know, this is a game he probably really wants to win. Uh, it's like there's enough little things there that make me go. They have to win at some point. And I could see this happening. I do think Houston is the better team. But I'm going to give this one to Carolina. Which, wait, where is that going? 
Sorry, it reminded me of another game that I was going to get into, but it's not on my list yet. So next is Cleveland and Seattle. Um, Cleveland is winning in spite of their suspect offense. And their defense looks really good. This is going to be in Seattle. And traditionally, the Seahawks played really well in Seattle. But that hasn't been as dominant these past few years. And even one of like their big... I mean, the biggest advantage of Seattle is the 12th man. But another advantage is just like... They're used to playing in the rain and like the cold and like the mist of the Pacific Northwest and shit. But... Cleveland also likes to play in the rain and the elements because it lets that defense really shine. So that's one potential advantage that the Seahawks have that won't really be an advantage anymore. The Seahawks do have a pretty good offense. They do have some playmakers on defense. P.J. Walker is probably going to continue his streak of throwing interceptions because I do think it's still Walker is going to be playing. But I've got the Browns winning, and I don't know how much of an upset that is, because I think their records are, if not the same, they're very similar. It's like, yeah, you've got a team that has statistically the number one defense in the NFL, again, at least in terms of yards. Going on the road, but defense tends to travel well, and we've seen what the Seahawks do inside the red zone. <laughs> it's not great. We've, I've seen Geno get sacked a lot. So I imagine Miles Garrett is going to be feasting. And if even he's not getting a whole lot of sacks, there's going to be a lot of pressures, a lot of like a few errant throws and throwaways, or he will set up teammates to get sacks. I feel like that Cleveland defense is going to get them the win in Seattle. The next one, the Bengals and the 49ers. Before the Monday game, I was like, yeah, like, I, I still have the 49ers winning. And now after that Monday game, I'm like, mm, mm. well, since he is undefeated against the NFC, they have been looking pretty good. And yeah, they are coming off on a, off a bye. That does help, especially with Burrow's health. Because if he's got another week to get healthy, and he was kind of starting to look better those past couple weeks, and now a full week to rest, the 49ers aren't invincible. I mean, the Bengals have a really good receiving core, and we saw what some good receivers can do to the Vikings, or excuse me, could do to the 49ers courtesy of the Vikings. There's that part of me that says, okay, yeah, the 49ers lost. They lost a couple games. Surely they're not going to lose three in a row, though, right? Like, you can't just be like, okay, they lost two. They're going to lose three. Like, that doesn't feel right. But the other part of me goes, don't call me Shirley. I'm going to pick Cincinnati. I don't know how confident I feel with it. But I I'm going to lock it in that I'm picking Cincinnati. And I feel like this is, this to me is kind of the make or break game for the Bengals. Now, not necessarily in terms of record. They're three and three. They're at 500. Only a couple games below Baltimore and Pittsburgh. They haven't played Pittsburgh yet, so they can easily catch up to them. And they're a game behind Baltimore because they've already played and like maybe two games behind. Because I, I don't, what, what are the Ravens? Are they four? They're like five and two or four and three? I don't remember which. Like, they're close enough in the standings that, yeah, Cincinnati can catch up. But for me, the reason this is the make-or-break game, it's not if they win or lose, it's how they look. You're coming off a bye against a team that's offensively really struggled the past couple weeks and, fuck, defensively, despite who they are, really struggled last week. There have been a lot of questions about you, Cincinnati, but it seems like the past couple weeks you've been answering them. This is the test. How do you match up against one of the best teams in the league at, I mean, this might not be their lowest point, 
But now that they're maybe struggling a bit and there's questions about them, if they beat the 49ers, okay, I'm going to say that the Bengals are back. If they lose to the 49ers, but it's close, it's a very well-played game by the Bengals on both sides. Like, the offense is able to do some shit. The defense is able to do some shit. It's like, yeah, Burrow might throw, like, a pick six or something. But it's like, no, he's played well throughout the game. Like, okay, I can start having confidence about the Bengals again. But if they play the 49ers the way the Cowboys did, I'm like, no, okay. You are just an aberration. Like, these past few weeks were just an aberration. And, I mean, one of them, you played the Cardinals. I'm not willing to trust you again yet. Again, you might still make the playoffs, but I'm, I don't believe in you this year. So, like, I'll still pick them to win, but I'm really interested to know, like, how it looks. Uh, next, it's Kansas City and Denver. I have literally three words written for my notes because this was just my immediate thought process when I saw that they were playing Denver. I went, again? Already? All right. Because it's one of those things that's always so weird to me where it's like you're, I mean, we're week eight out of 18, it's not crazy to think you could be finished with a division series already. But the twice in three weeks bit, I'm like, that's always weird whenever I see that. Especially because, like, they haven't played the Raiders yet. But they're already wrapping up the Broncos in a three-week span. Okay, it's kind of weird. But that's all I have. Those are the only notes I have. So I'm picking Kansas City. I'm not fucking picking Denver. Cool. They won a game against the Packers. Like, good shit. Good shit. My team couldn't do that. Good job. But I've said it all year. I don't believe in Denver anymore. After, like, week one, I was like, oh, this is going to be the same shit as last year. Tell you what. When you prove to me that you can win consistently, then I might pick you. You'll want a game... If they win, if they beat the Chiefs, which, you know, they haven't done in like 16 straight games, like, cool, you won consistently and you beat the best team in the conference, possibly just the best team in the NFL. Now I have to start thinking about it. But if they don't, which I don't expect them to, it's like, cool, Denver can't win consistently. Denver can't beat the big boys and the Chiefs just have their number. In other words, the sky is blue. So I've got... I mean, actually, it's a little bit gray right now, so, hey, maybe I just jinxed it for the Broncos, and like I keep saying, whenever I'm like, dude, a team, this team has no chance, they end up winning, but um, I'm still gonna pick the Chiefs. Next, we've got Baltimore and Arizona, and I'm, I know, I know, last week in my picks, I said I can't pick the Cardinals anymore. Because I want to get some games right. And I know I've talked about the Ravens being super inconsistent. I was like, I don't think they're going to beat the Lions. And boy, was I fucking wrong. But the, kind of like what I was saying about the Bengals. Like, to me, this is like a make or break game than playing the 49ers. This one's kind of similar with the Ravens. Because I want to believe in this team. I want to think... This is a great team. This is a team that's going to win a lot of games in the regular season and can go on a playoff run. This is a team that will challenge the Chiefs. This is a team that's going to overtake the Bengals as the kings of the division for the past couple of years. This is a team that can beat Buffalo. This is a team that can beat Miami, etc., etc. <clears throat> and beating the shit out of the Lions who are a good team, I still think, helps that. But you also got to take care of the bottom feeders, and God bless the Jonathan Cannon <laughs> Arizona Cardinals. I was trying to call them, like, the Cardinal Panthers. I, I was trying to combine Carolina and Cardinals because they're similar, and because I was trying to say Carolina, I was trying to call them the Panthers, and it was just weird in my head, and even saying it out loud, I hated it. But the Jonathan Gannon Cardinals are bottom feeders. 
you have to take care of these kinds of teams. They can. They should. I think the Ravens are the far better team. But I've got this feeling that, like, after such a big win, again, not just, like, in terms of both the quality of the opponent and the scoreboard, the Ravens are going to fall a little bit. And maybe they'll still win, but it'll be closer than we expect. Or they're going to lose a game they really, really shouldn't. And I, I don't think that's super unlikely. So I'm going to pick Arizona as like the upset pit of pit, the upset pick of the week. After that, we've got the Sunday night game, the Bears and the Chargers, which I am shocked this is not flexed out of prime time. Like I get why you want the Chargers in prime time. Like they're from LA. That's a big market. You've got this, you know, quarterback that everybody loves and Justin Herbert. You want people to be able to watch him. They're like, but why the Bears on prime time? Like, I mean, Chicago is like a big city and shit. Like, I get that, but I mean, this is like the kind of game you would put on Monday night. So it's like, yeah, it's like, let, let the Bears have something nice. But on Sunday? I think the Bears are any like what the fuck did the Bears do last year to make them think they were worthy of Sunday night this year? They had the number one overall pick. Really? This was scheduled? And both of these teams have two wins? They combined have less wins than the Lions. Why was this not flexed? Like just look at okay. Cincinnati and San Francisco, I could easily see that as a game that was, like, scheduled for Sunday night. Even Kansas City and Denver, like, would have been flexed out, but, and I mean, it was also a Thursday night game, so having both matches in primetime would have been, like, a little weird, but, like, I could kind of see it, like, it's still Russell Wilson, Sean Payton coming in, that's something to give them something, um, again, Houston and Carolina, maybe not Sunday night, but a primetime game. Uh, the Jags and the Steelers, I could kind of see. The Rams and the Cowboys, I could definitely have seen. Like, how the fuck were none of those games scheduled? Like, that's going to be the primetime game. But it's Bears and the Chargers. Oh, boy. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to see, like, what my notes are. And I think I kind of already talked about this. I don't know if I said it in this, ep this video or in the last one, where, yeah, the Bears are terrible. We That's been talked about all season. That defense gets taken advantage of, and that offense either plays like shit, or can actually score some points, but is going to come down to earth. They only have two wins. They don't look good. The Chargers have the same amount of wins. The Chargers find ways to blow games. They are not good either. And between the two of them, I trust the Bears more. And the reason I trust the Bears more is for one simple fact. They're not the Chargers. The char I mean, I've seen the Bears blow some games and like blow some seasons. Don't get me wrong. I will never forget the Bears starting a season 7-1 and one and missing the playoffs. I believe that was the same season where... No. This is a different season. I think it was the season after. Because blowing the 7-1 and one lead was the same year the Giants blew the 6-2 and two lead, which is the year that RG was RG3's rookie year because the RG3-led Redskins won the NFC East. Because the next year, the Eagles won the NFC East, because the Cowboys had this stretch for three straight years where they were 8-7. and seven. And going into Sunday night, going into the last week of the year, it was if you win your final game, you are 9-7, and seven and you make the playoffs, you win the division. If you lose, you're 8-8, eight and eight, you go home. And every year for three straight 
It was the Sunday night football game at the end of the year. At all three years, they played a different team in the division. The Giants, the Skins, and then the Eagles. And they lost all three. And it was wild to witness. But, so, the Bears had the 7-1 and one season, the RG3 year. The next year, when the Eagles won, the Bears were up a couple games on the Packers, I believe was the penultimate game of the season, or, you know, of their season, was a Sunday night game against the Eagles, where the Bears were in position where if you beat the Eagles, you win, you clinch the division. If the Eagles win, they get nothing. Because the Eagles were in a position where it's like, it literally does not matter what we do this week. We play Dallas for the division. Win, lose, or draw this week doesn't matter. We have to beat Dallas. And the Eagles kicked the shit out of the Bears. It was dominant. And it's like, the Bears are the team that have everything to play for. Why are the Eagles dominating? What the fuck? And then the Bears played the Packers. And they lost that game and lost the division. It's like you had two straight chances. What the fuck was that? I've seen the Bears blow shit. But the Chargers and Staley and even Herbert, because he's not immune to this either. They are experts at choking. I hope you will forgive this. It's not the best pun, but I thought of it and I wrote it down. I had said, it's like, yeah, like the Chargers aren't good either. They'll blow it and it will be embarrassing. <laughs> and I just wrote, I spelled out bear and underlined it in my notes. But yeah, I have the Bears winning because I don't trust the Chargers because they're not good either. Then we have the Monday night game with the Raiders playing the Lions in Detroit. And I'm just thinking, why are the Raiders on primetime again? Why? We're week eight and they've been in three primetime games. Why? They suck. We expected them to suck. What are they doing? The, they got Jimmy Garoppolo? I mean, he's got a primetime face. The man's handsome as fuck, but he's not, like, a primetime, like, man, we gotta get this dude on TV. Like, when the Bucks got Tom Brady, you're like, oh, shit. We gotta get the Bucks on primetime. That makes sense to me. It's Thomas Edward fucking Brady. When the Broncos got Peyton Manning, you're like, we gotta put them on everything because it's Peyton fucking Manning. I, I actually don't know what his middle name is. <laughs> Peyton the Sheriff Manning. Like, those, those make sense to me. It's like when you get, like, a new... Like, the Broncos getting Russ. Which, granted, in hindsight... But it's like, that's a big acquisition. Like, getting, like if a team ends up getting, like, fucking Belichick, you would want them on primetime because that's a big draw. It's Josh McDaniels and Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, I, it's probably because it's Las Vegas. And, like, okay, like, that's... A big deal. Like, I get it, but... But why? It's the Raiders. They're not... Good? I think the Lions... I think the Lions... Are also embarrassed. And they're pissed off. And now they're looking to take all of that rage and frustration... And just want to take it out on somebody. And in come the Raiders. Missing their starting quarterback. Playing a rookie in his second ever start. And I think his third total game against Aiden Hutchinson and the boys. And the Lions are licking their chops. Like we are going to... No offense to you, Mr. Aiden O'Connell, but we are going to eat your fucking kneecaps and make you regret wanting to play football. They are looking at that Raider defense and going, that's free fucking real estate. The Lions lost by 32 points last week. They might win by 32 points this week. And I know I keep saying it throughout this video. It's like every time I'm like, this team has no fucking chance. They ended up winning. 
So I guess by that logic, the Raiders are going to win because I think they're going to get destroyed. But I think the Raiders are going to lose, and I think they're going to lose big. So my picks for the week, Buffalo. That's more just me saying, like, I'm not ready to give up on them. I think Tampa's probably the better team, but I'm picking Buffalo. Rolling with the Jets over the Giants. Steeler, weird Steeler magic over the Jags. Philly over the Commies and the Gulag. The Cowboys over the Rams. The Vikings over the Packers. Falcons over the Titans. Miami over New England. Saints probably lose to the Colts. Carolina over Houston in an upset. Cleveland over Seattle. Cincinnati over San Francisco. Kansas City over Denver. Arizona over Baltimore in my upset of the week. Which is not, I don't necessarily try to have a big upset every week. I just I, I tend to kind of have a few. Uh, the Bears beating the Chargers. The Bears embarrassing the Chargers. And uh, the Lions mauling the Raiders. So we'll see how I do. Hopefully I don't do worse <laughs> than I have the past few weeks. But hey, any given Sunday, who knows what the fuck will happen.